Cyber Universe. Hello, Cyber Universe. How are you doing? Welcome to Beyond Trans Sunday service. My name's Marty, and I am a transsexual woman from the 1970s. <sighs> we call it transgender nowadays. So welcome. How are you doing? Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody that's live in the, in the chat room. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. Uh, big applause to everybody that made it here. Yay. That wasn't that loud. I really appreciate you guys being here. And sharing all the promo and stuff. Do you see I have a new, I have a new baby right here. My unicorn. Isn't it cute? Isn't it cute? I'm like, um, it's like my inner child. My inner child is, uh, is allowed to play now. So I got myself a neon, <laughs> a neon um, unicorn. I live in Canada. I would have loved to have got a narwhal. So if there's any neon people that want to make me a narwhal, hi, hit me up. Anyways, if you're new, uh, like I said, I'm Marty. I'm a woman of a teen trans experience. It started in 1977 when I was 15. And we meet here on Sundays for a Sunday service <sighs> where we can catch our breath where we can um, uh, pro promote each other's content, other trans creators and, and allies and stuff that come onto the show. We have some great uh, people on today, like my co-host as usual is Regina is here. Regina is here, yes she is. There she is, hi honey. Hi, nice to see you. And Eleni is here. Lenny is here, yay. And I think I muted you. And Brianna, she's she's watching everybody that's a, everybody behaves in the <laughs> chat room. Hey, everybody. Hi baby, nice to see you. But before Great to we be get here. Yeah, and so before we get this started, let's take just take a nice deep breath. I know I, I was so wiped out from transgender day of a week week of visibility. And um let, let, let's face it, it's like, it was almost kind of felt kind of stupid to have it because we're, we're so visible now. It's like in, crazy. Like we're like the, the main course to all the right wing freaking wet dreams that they're putting out there into the cyberverse. So I needed to take a good week off. So I hope you enjoyed your last Sunday. So let's take a hallelujah moment. Uh, let's bring in the spirit of the Fruit Loops. Blessed be the Fruit Loops into us. Yeah, let's um, let's bring it all in. Let's bring it all central into ourselves. Closing our eyes just for a moment. For those for those that aren't aren't with us today, those those that are suffering out there, let's let's do a minute for them. Let's take a couple conscious breaths for our friends out in cyberspace and in the world that are trying to navigate this crazy system. If you know what I mean that we're trying to crush the system, if you know what I mean. So. So feeling ourselves rooted in our chair, wherever we're sitting on, or if we're standing, just feeling ourselves nice and straight. Our backs are nice and straight, allowing the energy to move throughout our spine, nice and straight. Now check, check in with your shoulders and take a breath in and raise your shoulders up to your ears because I know a lot of us keep a lot of our tension in our shoulders. I know I do. Breathe in. And then when you exhale, let them drop. <sighs> Breathe in. Exhale, let them drop. 
One last one. Breathe in. And exhale. Let it drop. And taking a moment just to visualize a beautiful light. A little a beautiful light in front of you. Just imagine that you're at a, at the beach or at a river or some body of water. And there's this gorgeous light um, because it's a beautiful sunny day. And that light is hitting that water. And that water looks it, it's shimmering. And it looks like countless little mirrors shining back at you with this light. Just so see that this countless, it, today it's a beautiful sunny day here, so I could just look out my window here and just start breathing in. As you breathe in, imagine that you could breathe in this dazzling light that's all around you. Breathe it in, it saturates you as it goes into your skull, into your, into your lungs, it goes into your heart. As you exhale, you exhale out a dark plume of smoke getting rid of any anything that doesn't serve you anymore, which you are, you are actually doing when you are exhaling. When you're exhaling, you're getting rid of the carbon dioxide in your body. So exhale out fully. And then see that light. And now give that light some significance. Imagine that that light is your highest good, whatever that may be for you. May, maybe it be, you know, all your, your spiritual community, you know, the trans community, like people that are just good, that that energy is in that light. And breathe that in. Breathe it in on the inhale into the nostrils. And imagine that's going into your body, going right to the tips of your toes and filling you up with this dazzling light. And as, as you exhale, it's pushing out any darkness as you exhale. <sighs> anything that doesn't serve you any longer. And two more breaths, breathing in this dazzling light, your highest good. And exhale, release anything that doesn't serve you anymore. And now with intention, this last one, breathing in to your, from your nostrils, in your nostrils, this dazzling light, your highest good. And send it to that part of your body that you know that you need it the most. Maybe it's your mind. Maybe there's been too much chatter in your mind. So send that breath to the mind. Releasing any anything chattering, any 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 confusion and stuff. And as you exhale, imagine that, that confusion is being released with a dark plume of smoke coming out of your nose. Just like a diesel truck going by on the highway. <sighs> Beautiful. And lastly, we're going to really get rid of the, this darkness, any darkness that's inside of us. We're going to do, uh, this is my favorite, it's called the lion. Uh, you'd be squatted on all fours in, in yoga, in a yoga class of mine doing that. So you just breathe in, you can breathe in. And then you exhale, you stick out your tongue and you roll out your eyes and, and exhale. <sighs> that's good. Two more, breathing in. Exhale. <sighs> Last one, breathing in and exhale. <sighs> Yay! <laughs> I got you all on screen for the last one. I wanted to see if you guys are doing it. Okay, and then just relax. <laughs> now just relax. So. Now just relax. Let go for a minute and breathe normally. Come on. And whatever you're feeling is perfect and absolutely good enough. So we're feeling grounded, feeling the chair that we're sitting on or the, or if you're walking around the, the ground that you're kissing with every step on earth, feeling connected. Yeah. And then gently coming back into the room, rubbing your hands together, coming back to flesh and bone body. Yeah. Shake it out. Good. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Marty. How's Hi, everybody Marty. doing? How's everybody doing? Doing good. Good. Got a, I've got my partner here today. Oh, good. Oh, Aww. is it little puppy dog? So cute. Yeah. This is little man. He's a Hi, he's little a man. Brother. He's a chihuahua. Oh, is ever cute. Is everybody zoned out? There's 21 people, peeps in the peephole. We have 15 likes. 
Can you please support our show show by like like liking this video, sharing it right now on on any of your platforms, and um, yeah, leave a comment if you're watching this taped. Please, 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 and if you have any questions, um, I haven't seen anybody leave any any comment. Is this comment thing working now? <laughs> yeah, I see <laughs> or is comments. everybody buzzed out? <laughs> I see comments. You see comments? I don't see any. I, I don't see, see any some. after you. Oh, oh, yeah, they're they're slow. I haven't seen any th since you put it. Hi, everyone. Um, I haven't uh, seen Charlie's anything here. since that. Said, oh. Charlie said, hi, Lenny. Hi, Brianna. There we go. Hi from Mackenzie. Alberta. There we go. Yeah, hi, Mackenzie. There we go. So I wanted to talk about passing today. Like I'm, I let me for context, let me play a video that started this. This was a a repost from last year that I did about passing. And um, let me just play it first and then I'll, I'll talk about it, okay? Okay, where's my TikTok? There it is. No, that doesn't make me happy. It used to when I was living stealth and I was afraid for my life for people to find out. See, because that's what it is. We were trained back then that if you could not pass, to not even bother. If you could not live up to these delusional, hyper-feminine standards, don't bother. Even uh, cisgender women um, had to deal with that. You know, it's like it, used to, it was a battle just to wear pants until like the 30s, 1930s. So even though you mean well, this is why we have to do the work to to unpack this stuff because that's like telling you know, a person that's not my palm color saying, oh, well, you really pass. You know what I mean? Like, it must it must be good for you. <laughs> no, that doesn't make me happy. It used to when I was living stealth and I was afraid for my life for people to find out. See, because that's what it is. We were trained back then that if Okay, so um, that was the one that I, I posted this week, um, and and uh, with the with the note uh, a notation on top of it about passing, um, because I can't believe that I have to keep making these videos, especially for um, the up and coming, you know, transsexual you know, medicalist kids that are coming up that don't, that, that haven't really grown into a lot of stuff that hopefully they'll grow into and, and understand, you know, cause I was a medicalist gatekeeping person, you know, w until I, yeah, until I learned, you know, that it was fucked up. Right. So anyways, I, this was the, this was the, what I put underneath it. Um, I put, um, yeah. Passing is not the goal anymore. Yeah, sure, I know it is in the sense that our safety in a binary world, it, 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 I know it is in the sense of the safety in, in this binary world in the day-to-day, -day, but it's not, it's not the goal. Uh, no human should have to look a certain way to feel safe. No woman, no person. Um, you know, like that's like saying it's like, oh, it's like, you know, what was she wearing after she got, you know, you know, assaulted. Right. Um, my journey from my journey from the 1970s was a gatekeeping nightmare uh, that I'm still waking up from. I didn't realize how bad it was until I realized my own privilege, um, the privilege of being stealth and feeding on the crumbs I could hustle out of the world. And then I put smash the system as an C-I-S-Y-S-T-E-M. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, because I got attacked on Twitter when I, or Zwitter, Zwitter. And uh, because when I'm, I was bored last week and I went, mm, yeah, I just, I want to feed on some trolls. So I went over there and, it's like, and, I just, <laughs> and boy, did that blow up in my face. Cause it's like, I thought I'd get the regular trolls, like, you know, guys saying like, oh, you're not a man, you're a man and all that shit. Right. That, you know, that's like comes with the scenery. Right. But it's like, it was the, but it was these young really uber femme, like, you know, they look really good, like they could be in Playboy, 
you know, kind of wow. kind of stuff. And they and they're just grass. They're just holding. They're just clutching their pearls and and the and the patri- and the patriarchy that gave it gave it to them, gave them to them. And I get it. I get that. You know, I get it. It's like it's a, it's about they're they're you're you're making money off of it. You know what I mean? It's kind of like how I realized I had to, you know, I had I wanted to be happy and get my vagina because and 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 it was but it but there was this huge jumping off place because it was my money maker. You know, being non-op trans too, right? And also the only men that really loved me that I knew of, what I was like that. So it was kind of a jumping off place. And I had to realize like, okay, I had to just say, well, it's like if I could never be with anybody ever again, it's like, would I still want to live like this? And I said, no. And then I went, well, I think, you know, you're keeping it for the wrong reasons, right? Or not having it for the right. Wrong- so you know what I mean? So um, all of these lessons. So um so I just want to read a couple of the nasty things, and then I'll, I'll uh, and then I'll just put it, I'll put it out to you guys. The, um, so these were some, a couple of the real na- lovely notes. Um, so this one girl, she goes, "What is th- what is this? Somebody come get your grandma, please get your grandma off the internet." As your as an elder, you have the responsibility of education and to be able to actually look out for the dysphoria. <laughs> Get this. As an elder, you have the responsibility of education and to be able to actually look out for the dysphoric youth of today. And I didn't know that that was my job. <laughs> I really didn't. Um, uh, dysphoric youth of today. Instead, you are gaslighting them into a toxic ideology. I could never imagine doing this myself. Does anybody have the ability to pass? Does everybody have? No. Does every every sex dysphoric individual who transitions have the desire to pass? Absolutely. Because passing is what alleviates your dysphoria. No, honey. The world is what gives us our fucking dysphoria. And passing is what makes life worth living with dysphoria. Passing is your treatment. It's your version of chemo for your dysphoria. To, to spread the toxic ideology, you don't have to have... To spread the toxic ide- ideology that you don't have to ha- have to have to want to pass, shame on you. And I'm just like, see, they, they, they're so short-sighted, they can't see the whole picture, right? And when I tried to explain it to them, they would just say, oh, yeah, try, stop trying to gaslight me. And I was going, OK, she has she has fully drank the Kool-Aid. And, and then somebody put somebody put on her her thing, uh, said, uh, a comment to her. She said, it has nothing to do on how you look relating to attractiveness, but how you look as in how you should be properly gendered if. If you look male, you should not be gendered and viewed as a female. Oh no, that was an ad, that was an ad on it. She said so that 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 second one basically told told her you know called her out her own shit out right. So I'm opening up the floor. Well, you know what it reminds me of so much because you know this concept of lookism, right? And same as ageism, sexism. As uh, I was having conversation with my fiance this morning, and we we're talking about how if you're heavy, let's say we were talking about John Goodman and Melissa McCarthy, and they've recently lost weight, that people treat you nicer when you lose weight. And I, I thought, God, that's horrible. Like, what, you know, what if you are a person of size and that's just who you are? And you know, you're eating healthy, you're exercising, but you just happen to, you know, have that body type. And people are not going to be as nice to you um, because, or they're nicer to you once you lose weight. And I looked it up on the internet and it's absolutely true. People are, you know, have this lookist view where I discriminate against somebody because they're not attractive, they're not young. They don't fit my perceived notions of what male or female should be. And we're stuck in this really hard black and white place, if if that makes any sense. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Regina? Well, there's just a lot of different ways of looking at 
at this, you know, it gets so into the the whole, um, oh God, I, I had it right on the tip of my tongue here a minute ago, but the whole Patrick freaking male dominated tells us all these standards of how we look just like Lenny was was talking about there a second ago and, and um, you know it's it's crazy why do we buy into that bullshit why can't we just accept people for being human you know the other day I started doing some some work with with the with the Dow and and you know, if everything has no name, no label, no whatnot, we get the essence of everything. But once we start labeling everything, then we put edges on it. And we're always trying to fit into those edges. And, and why, you know, how do we, how do we form unity if we're like labeling everyone and, and, you know, the important thing right now is for us to come together as a group, LGBTQ plus everybody, because there are factions in this world who are very much against us. And, and when we are having these issues with, with labels and whatnot, it is really um, disheartening, uh, to put it mildly. Yeah, and like I like I said in in that caption, it's like I <clears throat> I'm not get, negating the fact that it's like it's um, you know passing is is important for us you know in this worldview uh, of 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 a binary the binary worldview that we that we participate in, and it's like but um, you know there there is safe spaces that we're creating and they're getting larger as you know like Lenny and I can attest to that. It's like it's just it used to be so niche where you could be right. Like it's like you know that's why I wanted to get to LA. That's why I wanted to get to New York. I wanted to, you know <laughs> Vancouver at least was a little bit better than Calgary and stuff. But it's and and over the years the decades it's like. Um, you know, it's safer now. Like it's not, it's not uncommon to see like a, a trans person that you can kind of tell that they are like working at Starbucks or something. It's not a big deal and it's beautiful. Wow. And I love it. And it's, it's amazing. It's kind of like how you, you, a noticeably gay person would have been working in the eighties and it was tolerated type of thing because they were funny, you know what I mean? Or whatever type of thing. But even though their rights weren't protected and stuff, but it's like, now I see it like happening with us, you know? And, um, but, but when I get, when I get blasted by these short sighted, you know, transsexual girls that are just like, you know, and saying rude stuff to me too. I'm just like going, wow, girl, you don't even know my story. You don't even follow me good enough to, uh, long uh, to, to, to realize that I've, I've worked through my tr own inner transphobia, like online in front of the, everybody, you know, it's like, I was, I was not non-binary, anything like that. I was just like the transgender, br uh, the transgender umbrella has holes in it. It's like, I'm, I'm not in here anymore. I don't want to be in here. That's where I was when I first started YouTube with all of these, you know, gatekeeping, gatekeeping transsexual women, right. That were saying that too. It's like, I wish they'd put a little effort into it. Like, Oh my God, like wearing a beard and makeup and calling yourself trans. And it's like, and it's like, you know, and I, and I knew I knew that I had that aversion too, but I knew that I had more of an aversion of what they were saying. I knew it was wrong in my heart and I knew I had to work through that and find out about it because I've said this before. I love Jeffrey Marsh, but Jeffrey Marsh freaks me, freaks me the fuck out. I love Alok, 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 is it Alok? Alok. I, Alok. I love Alok, but he, they freak me the fuck out. And, but I time. like, but I, but I love to be freaked out though. That's what draws me to some. If something freaks me out that bad, I need to investigate. And I know it's my own internalized, you know, being called a fag at school, being called all that yeah. stuff, being all that, all that stuff being thrown at me that Jeffrey talks about. So it's, it, it triggers my trauma. So that's why it does. And, 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 and that's what he's doing. That's, that's the gift that he's giving everybody is that, 
they're you know that because everybody has that stuff within them and those the 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 most ardent turfs and stuff it's usually you know well we all know it's always the skeletons in the other person's closet the uh, chat room's got a couple of really interesting comments uh simon azar transitioning has nothing to do with passing transitioning is the process of finding your authentic self finding your happy place also i'd like to point out hauntus farmer truth passing is nice but i'm glad it's not a life or death requirement anymore and then simon comes back one more time and says passing is a social construct with the ideology of how society wants and needs people to look and act to better serve their uh the needs of that society and not the needs of an individual so amen that's that's simone brianna Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. I, my apologies, Simone. I am. I am so sorry. I just. I was trying. I was trying to get everybody pr- uh, recognized. <laughs> yeah. No worries. So, Simone. And yeah, you know no. the thing about passing is, as someone said it's. Thank God, it's not a matter of life and death anymore. Well, for some people, it is. It depends on where you live, and even cisgender people who may not fit into the norms these these tight little boundaries that we've set for what a girl looks like what a boy looks like what a woman looks like what a man looks like if you if you don't do that then you you could be there are vigilantes in florida who are attacking cisgender women because they think they're men in the bathroom right and 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 you know i worry about that because sometimes i just tell people you know be in a room with confidence and just go for it because a lot of in my experience has been everybody's fear of of some someone who is different and if we enter a room confidently then then we're safer but what if we're not you know, I I worry about about that sometimes, and and but I don't know how else to to get that moving forward. I've never had really issues, and and uh, and the bigger cities is is where I do run into an, an occasional misgendering or or something. But here in Redneck eastern washington with all the cowboys and and wheat ranchers and whatnot i'm pretty safe yeah you know and and this is the reddest part of washington but, state but the but the, I mean, but the but the but the sheep aren't <laughs> they're they're afraid <laughs> they're very afraid <laughs> they're very afraid <laughs> anyways oh my goodness I want to welcome anybody that just popped into the show, um, Sunday service. Uh, you missed a good meditation this, uh, at the beginning. If you want to watch this tape later, um, check that out. And also, if you want to donate to the show, please, please, please make a donation. The collection plate. This is our collection p- plate part of the program. Uh, down down underneath, down there is in the description is my PayPal me. That's the best way to send me stuff, um, then um, YouTube doesn't get a cut of it because they take like half of any super chats or whatnot. Yikes. So yeah, please support the program. I'm trying to pay off, um, it take, I've got about a, I got about a $600 bill to pay off for this YouTube uh, uh, that, um, I, that was, I was billed in March. So oh. I put it on a credit now. So please, please, please help support the program. Thank you. And leave comments. If you're watching this taped, uh, please leave comments down below. Or if you're just peeping in the peephole and you don't feel um, uh, comfortable enough, you can always do it there. Or on my socials down below, you can always send me a direct message if you wanted to be really private about it. I get to my uh, direct messages at some point. Uh, Just don't put any weird words in it and it won't be filtered out. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, the whole passing thing, it's just so, uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's normal to, it's, it's normal to want to pass in this world. Of course it is. And, um, and, um, you know, that was the Holy Grail when I, like, like what I said in, uh, in my TikTok video that I played, 
It, it was so true. Tiggy and I had a pact. We had a pact as we were growing up as kids. We said, okay, if we start looking like men, uh, it's like we're, we're, we'll stop. We'll stop this. Because we knew that there was just no way because we saw what was happening out there to people that couldn't pass, right? It was, it wow. was like, it was like, you know, dead or alive, right? And even if, and like I said, even if you could pass, it was still the, the crumbs that you would be able to, it, it would only be a niche type of uh, working environments that you could work at, like, you know, at, you know, gay clubs or gay owners of business businesses, but then you're beholden to them too. Like if, you know, you know, I've, I had tried to have a job with one gay friend and it's like, you know, and you know how, you know how, how in the queer community, everybody's fighting and backstabbing each other so much. It's like, I, I had been out at so many times trying to get jobs in straight jobs and just run right out of a restaurant once the one Sunday, well, one Sunday rush, one Sunday rush. And I was actually in there working and it, it got so uncomfortable. People, it just became this, it just became like, Oh, come see this, this beautiful freak working at this restaurant right now. Yeah. It was just horrid. Yeah. yeah so it was it's just really hard. And, and for a lot of people, you know, there's even a, a subreddit, um, about, trans passing and people trying to say, do I pass? Do I look okay? And and I realized that it causes a lot of anxiety for people. And I, I didn't have that experience because I transitioned pretty early and it just, I was pretty fluid for me and I was very fortunate, but I see that. Well, anxiety and, man, and men, men can fly, under, men can fly under the radar more because of the male privilege. Absolutely. And because there's a lot of short, kind of yeah. small frame men, uh, cis men. But I remember just to be completely honest in the same way I had to deconstruct my internal racism from growing up in the South. I also had, you know, discomfort when I was in trans groups for a discussion or support group or a meeting. And there were mostly trans women who didn't pass because not at, obviously older people didn't have access to puberty blockers. And so you've got tall, broad shouldered women. And I, and I, I had sort of a combination of sadness and discomfort. And until I looked in myself and said, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> what, how in the world do you have the audacity to judge these people. And so it took me a while. And when I first saw um, uh, the German singer with the great voice who wears the full beard, who won like Eurovision. Uh, oh, yeah. Was, I was like, what? It blew my mind. Jeffrey Marsh blew my mind. All of yeah. blew my mind until I heard them speak or talk. And they were so full of truth and authenticity and love for themselves and mm -hmm. said, you know what? All you efforts out there, I'm good. I am good with me. And so yeah. it was that internal self-confidence that allowed me to deconstruct my prejudices, my lookism and my expectations of what people should look like. Yeah, I love that. Love that. I know such powerful, Amen. powerful, powerful Hallelujah. teachers. Powerful teachers. <laughs> I'm just glad I can teacher, recognize so that, recognize that when I have that aversion with the, with those people, and then and know where it comes from. I think it's so important for us to do that. It's paramount for us to 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 truly be gracious guests in the world is to unpack that you know, our own inner transphobic demons and racism and all that stuff, you know, because we all are, you know, if you're, if you're born white, if you were born white in North America, you're, you're a freaking racist. Pretty much. You're a racist Pretty and you much, have work yeah. to do and you have work to do. Well, yeah. If you, if you don't know the systematic uh, oppression that has happened ever since, like I'm watching on Apple TV, it's called Manhunt. And it's about uh, John Wilkes Booth, and um, and it's really a good storyline about how how um, you know how white how uh, white people got like this you know 
800 year start like in the in, in the americas or whatever how long it was and that at that when when um and when the civil war happened unfortunately because uh, uh, Lincoln was killed like the the f- same week that it was over. It's like in this this new president, the vice president, just stopped all the reconstruction. They were ge- they were going to be giving uh, plots of land to like two hundred, three hundred thousand black people that w- that fought in the in the in the Union, right? And they stopped that, and that would have been the leg up for for these people, and and that that totally. Uh, uh, you know, put everything back. It, it didn't, didn't, were, were, wasn't allowed. Uh, you know, they, uh, they were not allowed to get a leg up in this world, and it just, just pissed me off so much when I saw that that's the root of it. And I'm so glad that they're showing stuff like this. And that's why I'm saying, as white people, we need to know the history of why there is this systemic, like, you know, problem of, of you know, such a huge population. Uh, of black and brown people that are displaced, that are in the system, you know, in the in the in the prison comp, uh, industrial complex. You know what I mean? Like it's just, you know, if we if 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 you can't learn all that and take all that in, you're a freaking racist. <laughs> and same with transphobia. It's like if you don't do the work, it's like you're you got transphobia in you. You know, when I get a, I did a, I did one of those, one of those YouTube videos, like that YouTube video that I started with this with, it was with a person that thought they were giving me a compliment saying, oh my goodness, it's like you, you are so, you are so flawless, like you passed so well, I would never have known, you know, you must have a really good life, you know what I mean? And it's just like, ooh, it just made me feel like, you know how weird that is? It's like, it's like hiding it's like hiding your Jew- Jewishness in uh, living in Nazi Germany. You know what I mean? Right. That's what it was. That's right. what it was like. I just wanted to, if I might, read this quote from Janet Mock, which I posted on Threads um, about passing. If that's okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. The, mis- the misconception of equating ease of life with passing must be dismantled in our culture. The work begins by each of us recognizing that cis people are not more valuable or legitimate and that trans people who blend as cis are not more valuable or legitimate. We must recognize, discuss, and dismantle this hierarchy that polices bodies and values certain ones over others. We must recognize that we all have different experience of oppression and privilege. And I recognize that my ability to blend in as cis is one conditional privilege that does not negate the fact that I experience the world as a trans woman with my own fears, insecurities, and body image issues, no matter how attractive people may think I am. I like that. Yes. Well said, sir. Well, she's an amazing um, writer, producer. I met her once at an event here in New York. Yeah, um, she's a buddy. She was editor for Forbes or something influential, but then she came out with a memoir. She just directed movies. I mean, she's fierce. She is. She's one of the ones that helped um, when I first came on to social media in 2014 and on Twitter and her and Laverne Cox and stuff. I didn't even really know who these people were. And they were saying, you got to keep telling your story, keep telling your story. And they were like, reposting my stuff and I was like and then I saw them just oh, doing nice. stuff I know it's so cool Hauntus has a great um, uh, comment here for a trans woman it's like if you pass you get the prize of being a woman in this world if you are a black like me you get to be a black woman in this world yeah wow yeah when I hear about trans the the the, the the trans experience for uh, black and BIPOC people today, like the the traumas and stuff that's happening, it reminds me of how it was straight across the board when we were kids, where it was just so, um, the oppression was so sick, right? It was just insane. Yeah, we have lots of work to do. And And, and that turns into racism too, because, you know, there was a time in New Orleans where we had, you know, very mixed people who were, you know, mulatto, and we called them, you know, different names, and they would 
pass as white. And that's also the same for indigenous and, and first nation people who would try to pass as white. And it's just so messed up. I mean, we, I know. we just see the beauty of the garden of humanity and all the different flowers and how colorful they are. I think we'd be in such a better place. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, really, do you want your garden to be all white daisies? Or no. would you like to have a little bit of color thrown in there? Oh, God. Absolutely. <laughs> I have often said what a fucked up world it would be if everyone out there was just like me. You know, we need <laughs> the diversity. We need everybody to be authentic. Just be. Agreed. Oh, that was a conversation killer. <laughs> I am a trans uh, I woman. I dress well. I have a moral. From Edward, I'm just wondering if they're a troll or not. Have a great job, and I'm going to be proud of who I am. I, well, that's... I hope that's true. Congratulations. Yeah, that's good. I know sometimes it's like I have to remember too. It's like some trans, some of us trans. You know, we're all different, right? Like some of us want to be Betty Crocker. You know, really? Some of some of us want to be Betty Crocker and be like in nineteen fifties and 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 like and take care of their man and do all that stuff. Like they want to do that. I don't get it, but it's like I kind of did when I was a kid, and I thought, oh, okay, I'll, I can't wait until I get married. And it's like, and then we'll we'll own this grocery store, and I'll work the till, and he'll do all the stocking and stuff. And it's like you know, and he'll take care of me. You know what I mean? Like, and and I'll cook him like pierogies and you know what I mean like I was just like that's it and now I'm like just like oh, what are we gonna eat tonight Graham like, I just... suddenly Seymour <laughs> suddenly Seymour <laughs> Go the, uh, she was the ultimate traditional wife you know I posted this in the in the uh, chat and I want to say it here on live yeah uh, there, there's a saying that I've Oh, I came up with back in the early 2000s. The greatest gift is not seen with the eyes, but felt with the heart. And if more people would adapt that, just get to know the different looking people, if you will, to look at us and say, that's a nice person, or that's a hardworking person, or that's a very compassionate person. Not you're trans, you're, you're gay, you're lesbian, or you know, those labels are really unnecessary and to the point where it's almost becoming an insult to say. I mean, I may be going in the left field here on that one, but I mean, you, you understand what I'm trying to say. Well, yeah, in the sense of utopia. <laughs> Somebody brought that up yesterday, utopia. <laughs> Well, but Being you had a, a good comment to that. You said <laughs> I said utopia, and you said evolution. Yeah, which I think is a much better goal because yeah. utopia is, by its very nature, unattainable and in a, yeah unobtainable. And yeah, whereas evolution is obtainable. Yeah, because so, evolution at some point there shouldn't there shouldn't be any letters. There shouldn't be any, people should just be able to, um, you know, love and be loved and and express. And, um, and you know, whatever, it's, it shouldn't matter. It's just so crazy that we even have to think about that. Cause that one line that I put, I said, it's like, we shouldn't have to be in danger for the way that we look. Yes. Like, isn't that right. to even write that sentence? It was like, I, do I actually have to write this sentence? It's like, just, and, you, and I'm like, yeah, we do. Like people actually want to unalive you just because the way you look. And that's why we have, those letters right now, Brianna, because we need those communities to feel safe in to do the work so that we don't have to have the letters at some point. Because I agree. It, well, as we evolve, as we will get there, we will get there. I'm, we will. We will. And, and I agree. I, I would love to know what a world without labels as, again, my very. Absolutely. 
fiance says, what would a world without labels look like? Why do we need labels? And I know that for some kids growing up, if, if you could put a label on it and say, why do I feel this way? And now all of a sudden, you know, oh, I'm neurodivergent. Oh, I'm transgender. Oh, I'm gay. Now you have something to attach to the way you feel. But that's only because other people are expressing some kind of discomfort or telling you that it's wrong. Yeah, it's different. Exactly. exactly. Like the whole, the, the, uh, the actual words, neurodivergent neuro, neuro means that you're diverging from what's like normal. It's like, and, and that's, you know, that's, I think where the gold is, where we need to kind of look at that and, and, and embrace all of that because most neurodivergent people are like OCD or people like that or have been the most brilliant minds I've ever met in my life. Exactly. Yeah. But imagine, you know, as Soph says, you know, on, Simone on put like, Simone put in Portland, we don't put a label on it. Instead, we put a bird on it. <laughs> <laughs> but as uh, Soph, Soph, Sophia McLennan says, the comment of the the comment of the live stream has been awarded to Simone Azar. Please, um, please send us your address, and you'll be receiving your little uh, bird cage. <laughs> right. Oh. Sorry, Len. Well, I do have to cut out, y'all. I'm sorry. It's four o'clock. I have a hard. Oh stop, yeah. Oh yeah. We got to wrap here. up anyway. Oh. We yeah. got to. We're wrapping up anyway. Love hey, you guys. Bye, Lenny. You're gonna pop off right now. Bye. Okay, baby. Take care, Lenny. Love you. Love you. Bye. Sorry for keeping you so long. Got it's always good to see too. you. Indeed. And then I'm going to change Brianna to there. There we go. Oh, Brian. There we go. Hi, everybody. No. So anything, anything here. else we're anything else, anything else we're missing in the chat? Uh, well, Rita actually has a pretty decent little saying. Uh, says, I made that exact point at a school board meeting. My daughter is also TG. Uh, also, because that's only one part. She is so much more. Um, the society needs to stop being so scared. Quit making laws for us. It's almost... Yes. Why am I not centered here? Um, Miss Niloth, the labeling of things is a modern concept. I feel like, yeah, there. I think the old way of living before humans started categorizing was just everything just inherently being open to any kind of experience. Makes sense, yeah. Just be. It does. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's so simple and and yet it's so difficult to get people to go along with that. Oh, and Rita May, I want to thank you for being a good human with your daughter. I made an exact point at school board meeting. My daughter is also TG also because that's the only one part. She's so much more. Yeah. Yay. Yay for good human parents. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. And anything else? I I agree, but passing is for me, it just be the only way to cure my dysphoria. CT used to tell me not to transition except myself. Now that I can transition, people say I shouldn't have to. Well, no, no, definitely passing it. Like I, like I said at the beginning, it's like, you know, we, we live in this, I'm not an idiot, like we live in a world that it's like, the better you pass, the better your life is. It's just the way it is. That doesn't mean it's a good thing. That's just the way it is. And it's like, and if that helps you with, you know, get, that, you know, it certainly helped me, it helps me, you know what I mean? But I'm saying that we're, but the fight, our goal and our fight is to do that because not everybody can pass. No matter how many freaking surgeries or whatever you get, this, people will not pass, and 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 people shouldn't have to be, and that's the goal. So that's the goal. So that's what I want to drive home. Yeah. We don't need to be critical of those who don't. That's 
you know? not only that's not to be critical it's like it, that the, the goal yeah. it the goal is not to have to worry about that to be in a society where it doesn't matter if you're if you feel like you if if you are a woman i like i was at a I was at a department store and I went through like a, uh, like a self checkout and this woman was like, you know, orchestrating the whole thing, working there. And she was talking, trying to talk to me and she had long, uh, they had long hair and she had a beard. She had a beard and my, you know, my vampire, my vampire Trandar, you know, could tell that she was probably a fab at birth. And she was growing a beard. And so, and, um, and I thought, fucking great. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, and it shouldn't matter. But some, but some yahoos were looking at her like she was like, like they wanted to punch her. Or punch them. Right. I shouldn't even say her because I don't even know what she goes by. And that's the reason why I'm saying that is because when people start defending and saying, oh, it's like, you know, I'm a transsexual girl and it's like, and it's like, and I, it's like, you shouldn't be like telling, telling us that we don't have to pass. I'm not telling you not to pass. I'm not telling you that it's wrong to pass. It's like, I'm telling you that it's, it's wrong that we should have to pass. I have a young lady that I've been. Am I saying it wrong? Like, why do people keep not getting it when I'm saying that? Dude, am I am I am I not making it clear? You know what I mean? Like it's is it like something bizarre? Not in my book. Yeah. No. No, I'm asking everybody here. There's a friend of mine who is transitioning and she's only been doing this for a few months, but she's to the point now where she goes out in full what she calls girl mode or comfort mode and her attitude she doesn't care about passing she enjoy, she's concerned about being her authentic self of being who she is and i'm at, you know i'm just absolutely proud of her for having the being able to do that and it's just it it's really you it's really incredible to see her out there being herself being happy being who she is and all that yeah because like, when i i'm just gonna i got i'm i'm kind of pissed off because i've been there's a there's a couple youtubers that i'm not going to mention but it's like i i when i when i watch older transsexual women that are like actually spouting off luckily they got small small channels but but when they you know when they come together and they talk about how important it is to that to um you know they start making fun of people that you know you know want to express themselves you know differently as a woman than than a traditional woman would and it's like and they're going oh it's like it's like if you're dressed like you know if you have like facial hair and it's like and then you're like so, there's so many beautiful have you seen some of the instagrams and some of the gorgeous freaking uh, trans people that sport beards but they're they they you know that but they have like makeup skills that would you know make god blush you know what i mean like it's just it's amazing like and 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 they're beautiful and, um, but it's like, the, but it's these, these people that just won't allow themselves to be teachable and, and they spout off this nonsense and they're trans themselves. So they're, they are, they are adding to the problem, you know, and that's, and I find it just, I find their ignorance evil, really. Oh, it's not. I don't even think it's ignorance. It's like their unwillingness to learn. Okay, you can talk. I won't bite. D Dre says societal requirements to pass and passing to ease dysphoria is a complex and it, it is absolutely, absolutely. Oh no, that's. I'm not negating that at all. You know, we're living in a. You know. It's kind of like I, we, 
do what we need to do ourselves and not be critical of each other and and try and make it to be a safe place out there for everyone that's the goal is for safety for everyone you know it i don't care about you know whether somebody passes or doesn't pass what i do care about is that they're safe yeah you know that's it we need a world that is safe and and we need to work together to get it it's it's that simple you know and and all the the old school girls and and you know we all need to just come together and be a powerful block but i've said it a million times come together right now over me amen amen okay i think we beat this dead horse to the to death um i think so because we're just repeating ourselves yeah yeah but i it needed to be said I, it was really it kind and the thing is is that it brought me um this started at the beginning of the week and then i started to internalize it and um and i started feeling i started having like a real a couple real funky days like feeling um because when it when I do that inner work, when I introspect and I look at that stuff, it, it affects me. Then all of a sudden I feel like, oh my God, it's like I'm getting ready and it's like I'm going, oh my God, it's like I need another facelift or oh my God, it's like I'm so, it's like or I start getting dysphoric or, you know, whether it's vanity dysphoria or, you know, gender dysphoria, whatever. It's like I start not feeling well type of thing because I start to internalize some of the stuff that's going on. So it's important to look at this stuff, but then to know, and especially if you have platforms, like, you know, and to call it out, call out the stuff, you know, because it's, um, it's bullshit. Like in Canada, gender identity, as well as gender expression, two points are protected under the law. So you can, it, you know, gender expression has nothing to do with what gender you what what you know what i mean like it's like you so so that's why i'm just so glad that i feel safe here but i know that most of the world isn't so i think it was just it was it's i feel really um i feel real drawn really drawn to you know bringing this up yeah miss nalaf is saying Maybe. here what i was trying to say at the very beginning about the patriarchy and about how it was the the ideas of what a man and a woman should be uh, and uh, yes i don't get it so, I mean, so oh yes the yeah, patriarchy is the reason oh yeah patriarchy yes the patriarchy is, is the reason why we even have to just yes me. exactly yeah because then like you know in ancient times like that's where yoga comes from it's um you know it's all about um balancing the male and female within all of us every uh -huh. one of us every one of us we're all trans man <laughs> i think that's that's why i i like taoism so well is because it's more feminine than any other spiritual thing so just between you and me anyway no and no i totally get it yeah, they're not coming off of the argument. That's what this show is all about. So we can talk about it to get to get clear. I like to get clear of what you know what I'm trying to say, and um, it's important for us to have this dialogue. Oh, Marty, this is how, how do you safe how, space? How do you feel about correcting others when they misgender accidentally? I, you know, honest to God, I, I just, it's, I can't even remember the last time when somebody has like done that to me. I just, I can't even remember. Intentionally, sure. Oh yeah, there's some really, one really good one. Where did I actually put it? I was gonna put it up here, but. And they, they put, it. this is from Adolf Klittler. 
<laughs> You've heard it right. Adolf Klitler. And he wrote, you don't pass for anything but a man. You never were stealth. You, you never were in stealth. We judged you the whole time. <laughs> like, talk Jack about, ass. like, what a, what a nutcase, eh? That yeah, was my, no co- that was my turf comment of the week was from Adolf Klitler. I'm so special. I got one from Adolf Klitler. Springtime oh, for Hitler in Germany. <laughs> Adolf Klitler. Adolf Klitler. So lucky you. I know. Indeed. What's the appropriate action? Ignore or correct? Um, pick your battles. Feel, feel, see what's in your tank. See what's in your tank when it's happening. What, what do you think, Regina? I always say, if they sir me, I always just say, ma'am, if you would, please, you know, just very conversationally and let it go. Um, Sometimes I don't say anything, but every once in a while, somebody will do it like twice or something. And I just say, ma'am, if you would, please. And if they don't stop, it becomes um, different. Yeah, and like Millie said, it, it depends if you're safe, too. Sometimes when I get, and it's rare nowadays, when I get misgendered, uh, I'll say, excuse me, you know, making sure they give them a chance to correct themselves without me actually calling them out. But most of the time, I just kind of, if they do it out of spite, I just ignore them. See, the way that it happened with me, like when I was like in the working world, right? Uh, uh, it would usually come up because in, with staff and stuff, because I worked in medical, um, there would be like a trans person there that was like, you know, in rough shape because I worked in mental health. And, um, and they would start talking about being misgendering them and stuff. And I would just start correcting them. And then they'd, one actually finally said, well, who makes, why do you know all this stuff? <laughs> I was like going, because I am trans or transsexual back then. And it's like, you could have heard a pin drop, right? And then you'd hear like, oh yeah. And then it's like one person goes, oh yeah, I thought there was something going on or something. You know what I mean? Like you, all, you hear all the bullshit, right? And, um, but yeah, it's like, but what, what was really cool is that a lot of a lot of these people that were kind of rednecks that really liked me once they knew that you know after but they worked with me for a couple of years it changed their perspective right so i think it's kind of cool if you can be stealth and then and then they find out later uh, because of their own you know misgivings about the way they talk about trans people it really um you know, it, it really helped me uh, cultivate some interesting relationships. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it's quite interesting when people start finding out or figuring it out, because I've always been pretty upfront about being trans. And, um, you know, and, and so repeatedly people have said, well, you're the first trans person I've ever talked to. And, and they'll still go and do things with me and still be nice to me. And it, it you know, that's it. Mostly it, in my opinion, is making it known, you know, that trans people are just human. It's no more than that. Rita May actually has a real good post right here. We've become outspoken. They're, they are cowards and we won't tolerate it. It's it is uh, past time to speak out. That's how this hate has festered. Yeah, that's true. And that's what we're doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, here we go. Melissa Vince, like she's the, she's the queen of moderators on TikTok. Some of the trolls from lives I've moderated in 2021 have come back around and are, are identifying as trans you now. Yeah. There you go. Bada boom, yeah. bada bing. There you go. That's interesting, yeah. <laughs> Presto, you crack an egg, you crack an egg. 
Hey, hey every, hi, Heather. Where's your head? I give you give good head or something because you don't even have one. <laughs> I knew this was too good to be true. I knew this you couldn't get resist. <laughs> I couldn't. Sorry, honey. Uh, Lovely figure though. And Morgan has a, a follow up to Rita May's uh, little uh, chat. Uh, true for me, it's not necessarily about passing. I just want to be to feel comfortable and at home in my skin. The terror I'm feeling, seeing hair come out of my face, and the feeling of razor burn is just traumatic. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, honey, for sure. Oh, the beginning parts is just horrific. It's insane. I love you. Are you your butter moth? Aren't you on threads? You're my butter moth friends, friend. Heather is asexual, not apologetic. She's a trans lesbian without a head. <laughs> we support people with no heads here. Um, <laughs> I got that. that it's constructive. Physical distance in your body. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, God. The, the, the academics have arrived. I'm like going cross-eyed. I'm just, a, I'm just an old granny that was brought up in Alberta. All of you with your fang, profangled words and stuff. Someone in work, work came to me after. Oh, Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Somebody in work came to me about a pride interview I did, told me she didn't know I was trans. I said, uh, never mind. It was as wanted to be judged for who I am and not the label. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yay. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Well, I, do, I, I came late. Madonna, I was five minutes Madonna late. So this, I think, I think we've got an hour in now. So I want to thank everybody for um, tuning in live to the live stream. Uh, thanks, Regina, for showing up. I know you've been a bit under the weather. I'm glad you were able to make it. We love you. It's my pleasure. And Brianna, thank you for coming all the way from Kansas to to click your heels and give us no, you're Oklahoma. <laughs> Oklahoma. <laughs> You're in Oklahoma. <laughs> Oklahoma, Kansas. What's a difference? It's like it's like over the rainbow and then some. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, thank it's, you. It was, it's my pleasure as always. I will always be back here as much as you want me here. Yes. Well, we'll see you next week. So please, everybody, keep your notifications on. And um, so you know if I've taken the week off or whatever because I am watching my health because I'm – just focusing on writing and this YouTube channel now and um, trying to stay off of all the other shit. Uh, I've just been really reposting stuff once in a while, but you can follow me on my links below if you want some day to day. Ha ha. You know, I post stuff on Instagram and YouTube a bit and um, TikTok. Um, and uh, what else? Oh, yeah. Again, like if you can donate to the show, I've got about, you know, I got about four hundred dollars worth of bills to pay off for the show for the year. So this is your, this is, this is Beyond Trans with uh, Marty and Friends, the channel. So please, friends, um, help support your channel that you want. And please, please share this video if you're watching it taped or afterwards after it's taped. Share it on your platforms. Get it around because I haven't been saying that enough. And all, all these like, you know, big YouTubers like, you know, um, Samantha Lux and everybody, they tell me that you got to do, you got to promote more. You have to ask your following to help you, you know, put yourself in that cyber first. So please, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. And we will see you next week. Um, I don't know what we'll be doing, but we'll be having some fun for another uh, Sunday service beyond trans. So let's take a moment. Take a moment, breathing in to conscious breath together and taking a moment, uh, sending out uh, good wishes to 
all of our trans brothers and sisters, non-binary folks and allies and any of the marginalized communities out there, that they be safe for the for this week and be happy and be free from suffering. Thanks, everybody. Have a really great week. Wave bye, everybody. Wave bye to everybody. Bye, bye, bye. everybody. Bye. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> Wrong one. Whoa, no. Whoa. no not that one. Oh, that's there's the, another one. That's another one. <laughs> Talk to me nice, talk to me honestly Look in my eyes, don't let it fall on me Say you a good guy, make me believe it Don't wanna hear it, I wanna see it See how Rewind, when we rewind Feel so nice Vancouver Island. <laughs>